Well, today um, I wanted to show a little demonstration. Now, first off, right off the bat, I'm not a professional welder. I don't weld for a living. I, everything I know, I've taught myself. But um, for the few out here that this will help, this is for you. So everybody else, don't attack me because I, I probably know less than you do and be the first to admit it. So as you can see here, we got a few small pieces of aluminum and it's pretty easy to tell which ones are oxidized, you know, which ones have a, a, a dirty coating on them and which ones are new. This side here, you know, fairly clean. That's, a, that's actually, you know, kind of dirty aluminum to try to weld, but we're gonna try to weld that right off the bat. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like trying to weld into this highly oxidized piece. Okay, now right off the bat, I'm not going to clean this up at all. Um, and it may, it may show when I go to start it, but uh, let's see. Now you hear that cracking and popping? That's the, uh, that's the wire trying to burn through all that. And it actually, it actually got hot enough and welded in there at least a little bit. I'm not even gonna to try to remove it right now. But, uh, let's clean this up just a little bit. And, tell you what, let's burn in a clean piece, fairly clean not got a whole lot of dirt on it but uh, I'll just tack it now you can see the black soot right there on that that's the contaminants burning away but as you see as this warms up there's a white ring that starts to form and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and burn this in now keep an eye on that white ring as we go through Now, as you can see, it was real hard to find that white ring until we got right at the very end. That's because of heat penetration, okay? Once we got in there, the piece got hotter, and it was hot enough to weld the, the or, I'm sorry, it was hot enough to burn the oxidation off. So, if I were to dissect this weld, and maybe you can see how the, the top of it is actually higher, I went the same speed all the way through. But once you get down in here, the weld is actually lower and laying down flat. That means that there's more of that weld in the metal than on top of it. So I got a lot better heat penetration down through there. And even though this is a highly dirty piece and I just barely just scratched it off, once we got out here, that white ring, that's all clean metal. That is getting so hot that it is burning the... Uh, burning the oxidation off before we get out there to weld it so let's uh let's take a look at our weld okay so looking at our weld now um i'm just gonna brush this off and i'll show you how light that black soot is now there's a big difference between soot being in the weld and soot being on the weld as you can see right down here at the very end there is soot in the weld but that was just where we stopped and it pulled contaminants from the end and pulled it back in as we stopped. But uh, looking at that, it really doesn't look that bad. But try to use my uh, brush as a pointer here. But maybe here at this angle you can see how as we started the piece was cold. Um, but the more we got into it, the more the the wire laid down into it so if we i don't know if we can see it on the other side and i don't want to touch the piece no not really the only thing we can see is uh we possibly could show that 
you know that was actually getting hot as we come through when you when you push when you push your spool gun you're actually pushing heat out in front of the wire so uh, I'll tell you what you can you can see how oxidized this is it actually has white crystals on top of it even though I mean it's a really dirty piece but I'll tell you what let's clean this up and I will take uh, I will take this clean piece and uh, we'll weld to it and show what a what a good clean weld looks like I cleaned this up with a stainless brush now this stainless brush only gets used on aluminum and nothing else um, and you really got to watch if you're running some some old aluminum or and it's got some gum or grease on it like that you don't want to get any of that on your brush because it will it will leave contaminants um, in the places that you try to clean off now one thing that will cause me problems in this weld and i know it already is i cleaned this side of this angle off but as you can see i didn't clean this side off so all the contaminants that are on that side will come out of that and rise up and and give me a few small pops and cracks as we come across this weld but uh i got a good ground on here we're going to uh we're going to run a bead from here all the way down to the other end and uh, i'll show you what it looks like or what it should look like if uh if it's clean enough now one thing i need to i need to watch going in is this is eighth eighth wall okay this is quarter inch i currently have my welder to set up to weld three eighths now it probably isn't going to cause me an issue but it's one thing i want to keep in mind as i come across here and heat penetrates this i want to push my wire over to the heavy side as i go through to ensure that i don't burn in through the tubing Wouldn't you know it? I ran out of wire. Well, we ran out of wire. We didn't get to, we didn't get that fully welded in, but uh, we can still look at our weld anyway. Now, once again, there's soot on top here, and as you seen the uh, the splatter or the the bead itself, it was jumping and cracking around, and all that is is uh, was oxidation and contaminants that it was pulling off this piece down in that crack, and it was pulling it up. But uh, as you see, we go down through here, and as the heat penetrated, now I stopped right here on the end, and see this white ring? That's where the argon burns off the contaminants. So as long as, while you're welding, if you don't go out past that white ring, that white ring should burn out in front of you, or right even with the front of your puddle. If you have that, continue welding. If you're welding and, and you can't see it through my, through my mask when I'm looking at it, that uh, that ring is bright orange. The aluminum itself is, you know, kind of dark gray, but you can see that oxidation burning off as you run through there. So that's one thing to look for and is uh, pretty important when you're looking at your weld. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up because I can't hold the camera. As you can see, and when, when you look at a weld like this, is, see all the little splatter marks? And I mean, you can you could hear the, the, uh, the welder splatter. It just almost like popping popcorn. Uh, you can hear it popping and they, and they shoot out and, but they'll, they'll grab the first thing that's metal right next to it. So if you're welding some metal and, and uh, you can see splatter marks after that, that means you really need to come back and clean your material before you go any further. Now, it's really hard to uh, to see. Matter of fact, I can't see it at all. The uh, the cleaning ring. Now that we've cleaned it off, but uh, see how how smooth and clean that weld is. I, I'm actually going really slow to uh, to make a decent weld, and you can tell by the height of it that uh, I, the weld doesn't have anywhere to go. These are two pieces butt to butt. 
ideally both pieces would be clean and there would be you know uh, a 16th inch wide crack or a little v in on top of there for for that weld to have somewhere to go not all of aluminum will penetrate as you weld now i can really crank the hell out of this and crank it up to where you know the machine will burn as hot and as hard as possible and all i do is is start welding and depending on how much penetration i'm getting depends on how fast i go that's called splatter welding and it's it's very effective it's it's a lot harder to learn but uh, it, it always ensures that you got the maximum penetration um, but that's that's a pretty advanced technique and you can burn through real quick by doing that um, don't recommend anybody trying that unless you're uh, quite advanced but uh, that's what a good clean weld should look like now granted it's a little tall because like I said it's a butt weld but uh, all in all that's a good clean strong weld there's no way there's no way if I take this clamp off here make sure it's not hot there's no way that that's going to come off there. Okay. So. Anyway. That's what a good clean weld should look like. Um, just looking at some of my stitch welds in the boat. Now granted, this is on brand new aluminum. And as some of you noticed, I have not cleaned it. Um, looking. Now I did clean this because I, I spotted it and it broke and I had to come back and do it. So uh, you can see what that looks like um, underneath. There's more weld smoke on there than there is anything else. But uh, you know that's what it'd look like if it was cleaned. But uh, I want to look at some of these welds now. That's a really good weld. You know it's nice and clean. It's got good penetration. Um, I come to the end and I didn't just I didn't just turn off and pull out. I come to the end and I pushed it back just a little bit. And what that does, it builds up this little bit of weld down here at the end. Now, over here, I didn't do that. You see that crater right there at the end? Now, granted, as you can see, I've got that nice white burn ring all the way around the weld. So that's a good, strong, clean weld. The only problem is when I come to the end, I just quit. Um, you know no excuse for it that's just that's just how i quit um that crater on the end will make a weak spot on the end and and even though that weld's not going to be under a lot of stress because i'm going to have a lot more welds sharing the load if this were something to where there was weight hanging from it that end would be a lot weaker than that end okay but still yet again look at the weld let me get my wire brush Look at the weld, and I mean, you can see the, uh, the black soot. But, once you clean it off, you know, it's a good looking weld. Nice and smooth, there's no pit marks in it until the end where we, uh, we, we didn't burn it back to get the contaminants out of it. But uh, aside from that, that weld looks really good. Now, come down here to this weld. Anybody see anything wrong with it? You see the contaminants that are right there? I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, now, after I brush that off there, I can see that those contaminants were just on top. But uh, if I look actually at the weld itself, th this, is, this is uphill, okay? So I started down here and I, I pushed up. You always push when you use a spool gun, okay? When you weld aluminum, you always push uphill. So this is quarter inch thick and that's 3 16 thick, but as you can see that ledge right here, I'm wanting to burn into it. But I got in a hurry. See how far apart my U is? 
you don't always need to do a u-shape when welding aluminum you can hold it still and just you know keep it at one angle but uh, look at this weld over here how tight my u is and how slow i went up through there the uh, the outside of the weld should be a straight line now back over here to this one it's not i'm almost going up like this you know and really get in a hurry when in all reality I should be doing this okay to keep my to keep my pattern a lot closer together that may look like a good weld but that's actually a weak weld because of all the points you know um, once again the situation where it's at it's not an issue it's not a big deal but that's not what a good weld should look like just uh, catching my eye this over here now that may look like a little bit better weld and it's not too bad but it's good from here to here once again I didn't burn it back and when I started out I don't know if it was the angle of the gun or what but uh, there's not good penetration there right here and you can actually see the weld ring or the uh, the burn ring see how the burn rings white that's burning really hot if you look down in here that burn ring is brown so probably what I did I started and then I just moved up I didn't work back and forth I didn't give it, uh, the piece a chance to heat up to burn uh, the contaminants out I just started moving and since I had, you know, fairly clean aluminum, I didn't get a whole lot of popping and cracking, so I just went on. But uh, once I moved up a little bit, looks like I slowed down and I, and I went on. So from here to here, it looks like a good weld. But uh, it's a poor start and a poor finish. Guys, I'm not going to tell anybody that I'm a professional welder. Um, but just looking at these handful of welds that I've done over the last few days, you know, looks like I need to slow down a little bit, take my time. But uh, I'll critique myself, and you guys will critique me too. But, uh, you know, I have no problem showing my mistakes. All I'm going to say for that right now, um, you know, follow the guides on your machine. If you got one of these new millers that, uh, that have auto set in it, I mean, it's very nice. You guys have been thinking about doing that i highly suggest it but uh follow the guides on your machine you know use your chart aluminum match up the size wire and then the thickness and then you know go with the settings more times than not uh the guys that make these machines know what they're talking about so you know some of them may be a little off maybe a little weak you want it to run a little hotter but you'll learn that as you go along but uh, the big key to welding aluminum is watch for that cleaning ring, okay? Um, you'll, know, you'll know right away if you're getting penetration or not. And, uh, and listen to the gun. When that gun's going across there, if it sounds like sizzling bacon, that then, you know, that's a good clean weld. If it sounds like it's popping popcorn, you got somebody cooking bacon over there and there's a pop, 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 pop then you know it's, it's contaminated it's dirty stop what you're doing and clean the aluminum and try again i hope i helped somebody out there um good luck it's only metal uh you're only going to learn by trying right so uh have fun with it